how possibly we can using the GPT-4 and the LangChain to automate the any data science project. Let's start. First of all, just actually to loading all these kind of Python packages and the dependencies, okay? And then you can just like to populate your uh, Azure OpenAI API keys and the service endpoint to actually to do the authentication and authorize into the uh, resource you're going to using for this experiment. Then we are going to using the, for this test, the GPT-4 with the 32,000, you know, uh, tokens, which is advanced the GPT-4 model with longer context window. So we are going to also using the embedding, the ADA model as well. So that is actually the formula you can use in the land chain and actually to uh, take the user's query and generate the response as we already planned previously in the land chain framework. Okay, so then, you know, once I define these utility functions, I can ask any question to the GPT-4 and then GPT-4 can reply to me. So for example, I ask what is the, you know, the embedding technique, just explain to me in three to five sentences and then it give me some very nice and clear, concise explanation. Okay, so in another quick example, also I'm going to use in the weather uh, forecast API. So I'm going to, you know, to specify some like particular location, such like London, and also uh, retrieve the weather forecast for tomorrow at 12 o'clock. Then I want the GPT-4 to act as the, my travel advisor, give a, a list of like the activities I can do tomorrow according to the uh, suitable the weather uh, forecast expectations. You can see, uh, this is the in input prompt. So this is the temperature in London tomorrow, temperature is 18 degree, wind speed is 3.5 meters per second, and amount of perception is zero. So make a list of suitable laser activities. And GPT-4 can say, set scening, visiting the landmarks such as the Tower London, Buckingham Palace, uh, British Museum, and so on. And also picnic in the park, Times River cruising, outdoor markets, walking tours, zoos, and so on. So it's quite nice, like a list of the uh, you know the uh, you know the highlight you can go to uh, to enjoy one day travel in the city. Okay, so that's quite nice. This is just like a starter. How possibly we can use in the GPT-4? Now let's go into the main course, which is I'm going to demonstrate how can we use in the GPT-4 and also the GPT family and large language models in general to agree to automatically. Uh, perform some, you know, the data science project. Let's the GPT-4 to generate some the the data science code, you know, to uh, support the project. Okay, let's start. So first of all, so the, wh why we, you know, want to use in the, you know, larger models for data science project? There's many, many benefits, okay? So first of all, Thanks to you know the you know the large language models auto code generation uh, ability, the such advanced model like GPT four can help us to automate the most parts. Uh, estimate is about like a, between fifty to eighty percent of the project can be automated. You know by using such kind of large language models. In this way, we can much simplify you know the process of the data science work and also accelerating the whole project progress. Then in this way, you know, we can also focus on like the solving the most, you know, the difficult complex part of the project and let the machine to do some routine repetitive work. And then for the high productivity. Also by doing this, we just need to apply the proper engineering technique to craft a very clear and specific answer questions and the to bet, you know, the instruct the larger models to generate the more accurate and relevant answers, such called the text to code. So some actually the excellent uh, tutorials on how to use in the proper engineering and the GDP, you know, for such a purpose from the EDX and uh, Coursera, I indicate some resources here, okay? Then besides the reasons why we're using the larger models for data science project, 
So what's our objectives? So let's learn how to use the GPT-4 and also the, all these kind of the GPT models in particular that science project and how can I use it to support the end-to-end -end pipeline of the application development, such like that you can use in the GPT-4 to automatically generate the pro project planning and also suggest any code for the exploratory data analysis, data pro processing, data wrangling, cleaning up, and so on, to improve data quantity and quality, also feature engineering, feature selections, transformations, and creations, as well as model machine learning model, uh, uh, you know, the comparisons, trainings, you know, the evaluations, hyperparameter tunings, finally building uh, some data-driven app, some web app, which is interact with the end users, also deploy it to the target, any target environment. Okay, let's how to see how to we can do it. First of all, how can you gain access to the GPT-4? So actually, uh, as we know, GP4 have the two uh, capabilities. Either take the text or the image as the input, okay, to generate the uh, response. So it's a text uh, input capability is already available. Why is the open air standalone? Okay, or on the you know, Microsoft Azure Open Air platform. For open air standalone access, this is uh, some waiting list, you know, for the uh, GPT4 API. So you can also use in the Azure Open Air platform. Also, the public availability of the image input capabilities has not yet been announced, you know, so far to the September of 2023, okay? So let's actually wait to see when it will become available. Then we can do another test. So besides the GPT-4, you can also use any other large learning models, such as like OpenAI, Microsoft, Google, Meta, Facebook, or open source alternatives for the same purpose, you know, Although so far, you know, the GPT-4 is still like the state of art, you know, still the best possible model for the language, natural language understanding and uh, generation, okay? So also in this experiment, I'm going to use in some sample data set, which is the, from the, the Kaggle, you know, data science community. We got such kind of nice, you know, housing price, you know, the prediction data set. So just like the two other simple, you know, the data set to demonstrate, you know, the the concept and idea, how can we use in library model to simplify and uh, speed up any data science project. And of course, you can freely select any other data set, uh, you know, you are interested in to actually to do the repeat the test, just following the same, you know, approach uh, I'm showing here, okay? So this is the sample data set, the house pricing, okay, data set. So for the project planning, so let's use any larger model or your choice, either the interactive, you know, wise, uh, you know, user interface, such like the, you know, chatopenf.com or the Azure Open Air Studio or the GPCP Vertex AI, all, all these kinds of the, the GUI, you know, interface you can use it, or you can programmatically access via the API course to submit your query questions and get answers. Here, I'm going to use in the letter, okay, the API call. Okay. So also, you, you need to give as much information and context you know, as possible. And uh, in the input prompt, such like the what problem to solve, what exactly is the objective you want to the AI to achieve. Also, what exactly the data set to use and what columns and attributes and what rules record in the data set. Just tell this, this kind of the context information, basic information for the AI to generate. Also, the any data algorithm issues you would like the AI to help you solve, okay? And also what kind of application and the data product you want the AI to actually to uh, generate some, you know, automatically generate some code to build, okay? And also using which tools. For example, you know, the here is a, some sample prop I prepared for GPT-4 to generate the project plan. I have a housing pricing data set consist of 545 rows and 13 columns. Okay, this is this price area. Um, can you list the list? I, the list of the, you know, the steps I have to follow to develop an end-to-end -end data science project. Please include, you know, the uh, classic and, and imbalance issues and accurately predict the house price and we'll be creating a web app using the gradu and deploy it on the spaces and I won't be monitoring the model a performance in production for each steps in your project plan. 
please write a corresponding Python code chunk to do the job step by step with clear annotation. Okay, this is my instruction and uh, for the GPT-4. And let's see how good uh, the GPT-4 will be, okay, to uh, support this, uh, you know, the query, okay. So then I, I launch my, you know, the uh, queries and then um, waiting for the GPT-4 to get the code, then it's GPT-4 for able to, you know, generate some like the project plan with the corresponding code chunk. So you see, and uh, it said, sure, let's hear the steps you need to follow. The first step, data loading and understanding, okay. Then corresponding code, very nice. And then second step, data pre-processing, handle the missing values, any encode the categorical variables and also scale the numerical variables, okay, nice. And also the third step, feature selection, fourth step, data splitting, into the training and the test test set, then uh, model building in the fifth steps, building a machine learning model to predict house price, and also model evaluations, and finally model deployment, creating a web app using the gradual and deploy down space. Okay, so quite nice. So let's actually to you know to actually to uh, follow what the AI told us actually to building such a kind of data science project. First of all, that loading and understanding, okay, just loading the um, CSV um, file and then choose like the some square samples from this uh, house pricing data set and also like the statistical distributions or some numer numerical features. And then, you know, the in the second step, that processing handles like the missing values and also like the uh, uh, encode the categorical variables and also normalize numerical variables. Okay, quite nice. Okay, and uh, then you know the um, in the third step, feature selection. Okay, so the AI suggests using the, the correlation, you know the feature, uh, you know the matrix to actually to identify what are the important relevant features, you know, for us to predict the house price. Okay, and also suggest using the threshold of zero dot to five, you know, to actually to decide which features will be selected uh, to train the model. And uh, here, you know, the you can see the, um, according to this, the area and the bathrooms are, you know, regarded, you know, as like the, the, the top two most important features to predict the house price. So I assume this is like the, you know, the location, location, location area is always the most important factor, right? I think across the world. So that is correct. Also the, for the bathroom, of course, I think that maybe due to that house pricing, which is supposed to be somewhere in the USA, the people you know, love the bathroom and the text bus. Okay, so that's great. So, and also, you know, the, we can also print out what's like the, the feature importance in the descending order. So you can see, area bathroom is top two, and then close followed by the air conditions, storage, parkings, and bedroom. All this is, is actually the missing from the selection. So my menu tweak here is actually, I'm going to visualize the features correlations to price to select the important features and also fine tuning the selection threshold, okay? So say if the, you know, the zero, you know, dot five is actually need to be too high, okay? So let's see, this is like the, uh, correlation, you know, matrix heat map, okay? In this way, you know, the, possibly, you know, I want to actually to fine tune, you know, the threshold from 0 0.5 to 0 0.25. In this way, you know, I can include not only the area and the bedroom, uh, the bathroom, but also the bedrooms, stories, parkings, you know, main road, guest room, air cons, preferred area, furnishing status, okay? Into the, you know, the a bunch of like the, the important features for model to learn. Okay, that is like the 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 manual work you know I do on top of like the auto code generated by AI. In the second you know the manual tweak you know, so I using those selected features only instead of all the raw features to train the model. So in the AI generated code you know it's actually using all the uh, raw features which is uh, you know the not consistent with the feature selection step because in the feature selection stage we said we only select a subset of the features okay here you know the we need to do the corresponding you know the model training using only the 
important you know the select features here okay this is another manual trick i did after i done the model training so we can do the model evaluations so here's the i nicely uh, suggest some code for uh, evaluation the model performance using the criteria such like the mean square error and also root mean square error imse and also the r2 score okay quite nice then here finally you know the for the like the uh, building some gradual web app okay so i also do a bit like the manual tweak to fixing a few uh, code bugs so at the model inference stage you know just prepare the input data like for like in the exactly the same file format as those for the model training stage so also fix some like a categorical including coding inconsistency normalize the numerical features only and also select the the using the select features only for the both model training and inference stage also fix like the some like the the web interface the incomplete drop down menu code for the furnishing status so finally you know i able to fix like the uh you know the uh, auto code generated by ai to make this gradual app up and running okay so let's see this is up running and um, uh let's have a quick test okay okay for as well so this is american you know postcode so let's say quite another one so we can choose another one okay five bedroom let's say like the three bathroom and three stores house maybe uh main road icons okay let's kind of the workings parking three parking spaces uh preferred area yes furniture status uh let's say uh unfurnished okay so submit now you can see the model you know the and this gradual app able to actually give us the price house pricing prediction which is uh this is what this is the uh eight point eight mini you know price okay so that is uh you can verify if it's a it's a realistic you know for the house price okay so here you know just going back to our you know the summary of this uh you know the uh, session so also we can see such kind of large language models like the gpt4 can give you a code skeleton and framework as a good starting point but you still need to fine tune a bit this is because you know the it cannot verify the code it generated sometimes it even give you some incorrect incomplete inconsistent or deprecated code you need to debug and complete and to make the like a full code up and run also you need to pay special attention to this inconsistency and the semantic errors out of the you know the generated app which is very elusive and hard to debug for example, you know the, in the above example, once and the AI suggests us do the feature selection and select a subset of features. So in the next step of the model training, the corresponding the subset of features should be used for the model training, not all the raw features. However, AI couldn't actually detect this kind of consist, uh, inconsistent issues, still give us some bit like the misleading code. So we need to actually using our domain knowledge and the data science skills to fix such kind of errors okay so all you know the as we said so in the data science you know the all models are wrong some are useful okay so uh, correspondingly in the area of the general ai all the large language models you know are wrong but some are still useful for our purpose hopefully you learn something useful today and uh, see you next time